All right, this is going to be a quick tutorial on pinning insects, or a little bit more specifically, pinning bees, but the principles are pretty similar for pinning insects. So the things you'll need are some sort of container to hold your specimens, and uh, these boxes uh, like this are nice, and they have a foam bottom, but you'll need something that you can you know, stab your pins into so they'll hold steady. You can make your own. I had one for a while sitting around here. There's just a box with some uh, with some foam on the bottom. Uh, you'll need pins. Uh, when working with uh, specimens, I often end up just putting a bunch of my pins into my foam here just so I have them there to grab. I know some people have nice little setups where their pins are all in a little jar or something, but this seems to be what I always do. Uh, I'm using number two and number one pens. Uh, that's just uh, referring to the diameter of the pins. Number one is seems to be the smallest that most people use if they're smaller. I think there are smaller ones, but they get really almost too flexible to be useful beyond that. Number two are big enough to do most specimens. If you've got a really big, uh, huge beetle or carpenter bee or something, you might need a bigger pin. If you try to use too small of a pin on a big specimen, sometimes it doesn't have enough friction to keep it from sliding back down. Uh, and also, if your specimen is really hard, especially some beetles, it can be hard to stab a small pin through it because it's just too hard. Um, bees tend to be sort of a nice middle ground. They're not super squishy, so they're easy to work with and not super delicate, but they're not so hard that they're hard to go through. If you're working with beetles or cuckoo wasp or velvet ants or something, they can be really difficult to pin just because they're so hard and you'll probably need to use uh, bigger pins for them just so you can stab it through. Um, the other things you'll need, of course, are your specimens. These are bees that I have washed and dried so they're nice um, and fluffy and beautiful. And of course, there is a, a label with this batch. Um, of course, anything without a label is worthless, so you always got to keep labels with everything. Um, normally, when you first pin a batch, you'll have you know one label that goes with all of them that has the information. At least initially, you can just put them in a line with that label next to them um, so that uh, it's clear what label goes with those. And then later, when you print individual labels for each one, you'll add it to each one, and then you can move them around wherever you want. But in that period where there isn't individual labels, you have to make sure that they are staying in that spot with the uh, one batch label. A couple other things I have. It sometimes it's nice to have some forceps or tweezers. These ones, these soft ones are kind of nice for picking up stuff. And then uh, a pinning block is a nice tool to have. It's, I wouldn't say that it's uh, necessary, but especially if you're new at it, it can be um, really helpful. So let's start with a bigger specimen. They tend to be a little bit easier to work with. So I got a bumblebee here. So when you have specimens that have been stored in 70% alcohol for a while, um, they're normally still quite pliable. They, they, re they retain enough moisture in them so they're not brittle. If you, they're stored in um, higher concentration alcohol, then that can drain more water out of them and they can become brittle and you may need to rehydrate them uh, before they are ready to be handled. Because uh, if they're too brittle as you're trying to pin them, you'll break off legs and wings and things. Um, you can rehydrate them just by putting them in a container with a uh, paper towel and some water and just letting them sit there uh, for a few hours or maybe overnight or something. Um, uh, but uh, from what I... My experience is that if things are stored in 70% alcohol, uh, they tend to not be a problem with them being brittle. These were only stored in alcohol for, for less than a day. Um, so they're, uh, and um, they haven't been sitting around too long so that they're not dried out. So there's really not a huge risk of damaging them, at least with bees, you know, other, you know, if you're dealing with crane flies or something there. <laughs> They're a nightmare, but bees are pretty rugged, and same with beetles. Uh, you can you can really handle them, and it's not much of a problem, uh, and not a huge risk of damaging them. It still is good to be careful, but uh, I think initially most people are 
overly cautious and unwilling to grab them hard enough to get the job done. So um, you really can um, grab them. This, this the, you know, fairly sizable B, so I'm gonna use a number two on this one. And the goal for pinning a specimen is to get it through the thorax. For bees, you wanna get it between the wings. And so when it comes to pinning, uh, ideally, the idea is you want to put your pin offset to one side. And the reason for that is that sometimes there are characters important for identification that are right in the middle. So if you put it off to one side, then um, the other side is undamaged. And so for bees and beetles, the default seems to be putting your pin to the right of center so that the left side uh, remains um, undamaged. And so for bees, that is through the thorax, off to the right side, beetle or bumblebees aren't too hard. So I just uh, push the pin in there and then um, now it's going through the thorax and that's good. Ideally, you wanna put the pin down so it is straight and you're not gonna see this very well. I'll include some photos in addition to the video of, of demonstrating some of this stuff, but um, you want it to be uh, level in both planes. So level as possible in this way and level as possible in this direction as well so that you have a specimen that is flat um, to the surface below it. Now then the next thing is once you have it like this is deciding how far to push it up the pin. If you have it too low then um, there's not space enough below it to put any labels or to stab it into your thing. If you have it too high then there's not room for you to be able to grab the pin above it. So there's kind of a happy medium. Normally that's about three quarters up. And um, if you're not used to doing this, this is where the pinning block is a helpful tool. So the pinning block has three different levels. Your specimen goes at the height of the highest level here. So all you do is you press your pin into there and you just press it down. And then that gives you the proper height uh, for your specimen. Now the next thing, um, let's say we have our individual labels for each of these specimens. So we'd wanna add our label at the same time. Normally what I do is uh, I have my foam surface and I just set my label on the foam and then just push it in through the foam. That's just an easy way to do it. If you try to hold it, you're just gonna stab yourself. So push it into the foam and then you can use um, your pinning block here to set the level of the next thing. If you're just putting one label, you'll normally do it to the second step, and there you go. So if you do all of your specimens like this, they'll be nice and uniform and look pretty with the labels at the right level. If you had another label to add, say an ID label or a unique identifier, you could put it on and add it at the next level. So I'm gonna put this into my board and make sure my label for this batch is um, is pinned in next to it. So take another pin and just stab it in there so that now I know that all the specimens um, to the side of this overall label are, um, this label is the information for that specimen. So let's do another one um, and I'll pick a smaller specimen because that's where it can get a fair amount trickier. Um, just, I got a little sweat bee here and it's pretty tiny, uh, but it's not so small that you can't pin it. At some level, things become too small to pin um, and there are other techniques that I can mention briefly um, after I go over pinning. So I'm gonna wanna make sure to use a smaller pin. I'm gonna use a number one for this one and you know, this gets to be uh, a skill that you can get better at with practice. But again, if as long as you're not dealing with um, species that are super squishy, you can use this method where you just hold them. And I'm going to do the same thing where I press the pin in, try to get it on the right side, though that gets increasingly harder the smaller your specimen is, but try to do it off to the right in the thorax between the wings and um, so now I have it, sometimes what happens is you'll just stab in through the top part 
of the sputum, the top of the thorax. And then you're kind of difficult to get it beyond that. So what you can do is just take your foam and press it up and press your pin into the foam. And the foam will push the specimen up so that you're up a little bit higher um, and it's easier to work with. Now we can just press it in up to the level and we're good. Now there are some other considerations um, about the way the specimen looks that you might want to think about. When they're in this stage where they're pliable, you can move stuff around and it won't break them. Once they're sitting on this pin for a few days or a week, they're gonna dry out totally and then they'll become very brittle. So they'll stay in place, but if you try to move it, you'll break off legs and things. So uh, depending on how much time you have and how um, nitpicky you are, you can use a pin and move your wings out so they're splayed out, move your legs out so they're easy to see, um, things like that. You can also, you know, sometimes things droop and hang in ways that are un unpleasant. This bumblebee, for example, its abdomen is kind of floppy, and when it dries, it's going to be hanging down like that. Um, that's not ideal necessarily. I think in most cases that would be fine. So you have a couple options. One is you can take some other pins and kind of prop up the abdomen and leave it there. And when it dries, it'll stay in that elevated position. And that's a pretty annoying task, but you can do it. Um, another option is that if you have a piece of foam that's the right thickness, that's essentially this thickness, then you can just press them down. Uh, often you'll put like a a piece of paper towel down and just press it down in there and then let it dry with the specimen pressed against the foam and then it'll be nice and flat. Um, and that's actually a really good option. I just don't have a piece of foam that thickness at the moment. Let's see, what else? I think that's it. Um, so if you're doing a lot of specimens, then really the next issue is just doing this so it doesn't take a whole lot of time and you'll get to where um, you can press these in and go pretty quick. If Once you get good at this, you may not feel the need to use the pinning block because once you get used to the proper distance, you can just push it up and eyeball it and that'll be fine. You get pretty used to it. It's, you know, it's like the right amount of space so you can grab it, comfortably push it up, and then, um, then you're done. And that can make things a little bit faster. Um, but if you have the pinning block, uh, unless you're sitting there doing thousands of them, it's probably probably easier just to use it. So I'm going to, again, go in the right side, the thorax, push it down. I'm going to put all of these in a row next to my label. Now I'm just going to mention another approach that can be used, but it's uh, more technical and more difficult. And that's with really tiny specimens, you can point things. So I'm not sure if you can see this, but you can add a little point, a little triangular piece of paper using acid-free paper. Um, and there's little tools that you can point out um, these uh, points and then just glue specimens to this. And I've done this with a few ants here because they're typically too small to pin. If you just try to stab a pin through, you just like destroy it. So it's possible to then use a little bit of, um, you can just use Elmer's glue. Some people use nail polish. Um, there's a lot of different approaches. I think like just the clear Elmer's glue is probably the easiest option. And at least the way I do it is I will take the point and dab the point in a little glob of the glue and then set my specimen on the edge of a pinning block and then move the point down to where um, the point sticks, pushes up the, the glob of glue on the end of the point, pushes up against the specimen and it'll stick to it. And then you're good. You know, there's lots of then little details of how you do it, like where you point it and where you stick it to it. And, um, you know, unless you're specializing on really tiny things, probably want to avoid pointing, but just so you know that it's an option. I think that's it.